Hello. Hi, Max. Hey, hey, I'm a long, long time no see. I know, it's been crazy. I feel like it's been at least 12 seconds. 12 seconds at least. Maybe 13. So, hello again. Welcome to another one of our sessions for Wiki Tree Day. Um, we're excited to be here. I'm excited to be here because, as I said earlier, Mags is one of my favorite people. Um, not just on Wiki Tree, possibly on the planet. And who doesn't know Mags, right? Who doesn't know Mags? But Aww. just in case, I'm going to introduce her. Mags is a professional genealogist specializing in genetic genealogy as the founder of Grandma's Genes in Ottawa. Growing up in a family full of family historians, Mags was primed to become a genealogist. After earning her bachelor's degree from Columbia College, she began to work her own genealogy as a hobby. This 35-year hobby eventually led her to a leader role with Wikitree, where she currently leads the DNA Innovators Project and the United Empire Loyalist Project. Mags is an international genetic genealogy lecturer, blogger, and social media maven. She serves as admin for Facebook groups, including the ISOG Facebook group. She's a former member of the Canadian Casualty Identification Team. Through her nonprofit work with MitoYDNA.org, Max and other genetic genealogists are providing a free and accessible YDNA and mtDNA database for the genealogy community. Doing DNA right, MitoYDNA.org. Okay, so, bye. Bye. I'm going to turn the camera to Max and I'm going to disappear. That's I, magic. Thank you so much for letting me uh, share my knowledge of Wikitree and DNA and. Uh, I am looking forward to uh, sharing this with you. Um, incorporating DNA on Wikitree. Now, that's something that I'm very passionate about uh, because I am a Wikitree. I'm an avid Wikitreeer. I've been doing Wikitree for eight or nine or 10 years or something like that. So I've been around a while and I've been able to see how Wikitree has grown in all things, uh, but especially in the DNA ability on Wikitree. So let me get make sure I've got everything set up correctly. There we go. So Wikitree, if, if you're coming into this and you're not a Wikitreeer, or if you're a new Wikitreeer and you don't really get the concept of Wikitree, Wikitree is a single global family tree. Uh, powered by 928,418 volunteers. That's actually not the current number. The current number, if I were to bring that up, would be somewhere around, let's see, 10, wait, wait, 950,717. So that's the current number of volunteers right now. Uh, and we all work together collaboratively to merge duplicate profiles. So we would all be working on the same ancestor if we shared that ancestor's profile. Uh, and we would uh, work to improve those single profiles for accuracy with sources. Uh, Wikitree actively works to make sure that the tree is healthy and accurate, always has. You can add stories to your profiles. Um, this is my grandfather's profile, Thomas Cleland Hunt or Clee Hunt. Uh, and that is the cutest baby picture. I tried to get it to win the photo of the week contest at Wikitree and, and it didn't win. I don't know why, because he is just an adorable baby. Uh, this is my grandfather, uh, maybe when he was 11 or 12 or 10. And this is my grandfather when he was at Clemson University before he went into the war. Uh, I can put information on there like that he served in World War uh, II as a major. Uh, he went out of the war as a lieutenant colonel. Uh, he was also a Freemason. I can tell his story. I can say that he was born in Brandon Mill. I can actually write a biography. You can't really write a biography about somebody on any of the other sites. You can also put things up like this thank you note for having uh, uh, his, uh, for him being born from TC's grandfather to his parents back in 1908. So that's pretty cool. You can put those kinds of things up on Wikitree and create a really cool story. You can also add music, literally, not literally, but close. 
Uh, and there is my grandfather standing in the sweater. I used, I loved the sweater. This sweater was hand me down from 1928 to me. I wore this sweater in high school. There's a picture of me in high school wearing the sweater. Not only that, I played this coronet all the way through university uh, band. So that's another really cool thing. So you can add music, you can add color to uh, the Walhalla High School Band. Uh, that my grandfather was a part of. And that's Walhalla, South Carolina, not Walhalla Lake, heading off to the gods. And you can add DNA to WikiTree in a big way. And you can all do it collaboratively. Oh, no, no, not collaboratively. People get a little bit afraid when they see that word. But we're going to talk about how collaboration on WikiTree works. And you can do it globally. WikiTree is not American-centric. It is not North American centric. It is not Western Hemisphere centric. Uh, in the interview that we did earlier with Chris Witten, there were people from Buenos Aires there. There were people from Germany. There were people from all over the world who came in to listen to that inter interview. And it really shows that WikiTree is, is a global family tree. And it's free. It's free. That is Chris Witten's promise to us as WikiTreeers that it will always be free and accessible. Uh, and WikiTree and DNA, that's, that's you know, like the, the, the icing on top of the cake. So first, signing up for WikiTree, uh, it's pretty easy. You go to www.wikitree.com. You click on this Get Started button down here, and you just start filling in your information. One of the things that you want to do on WikiTree is one of the things that Chris Wil Witten is most proud of the community for is coming up with this honor code. Uh, and on the honor code, we just talk about the fact that we do collaborate. We share ancestors. We care about accuracy and that we understand mistakes happen. They're inevitable. And we assume that mistakes are unintentional when other people make them. And when we ourselves make them, we want people to understand they're not intentional. Uh, and we know that misunderstandings are inevitable, but we try to minimize those by being courteous to everyone uh, for a long time. And he probably still says, I just haven't heard it. Chris Witten says we, he wants WikiTree to be the, the most polite family tree out there. We respect privacy. So we privacy protect things that uh, we think our family members might not want public. We respect copyrights. We don't just copy, add, you know, verbiage to a profile and not give uh, an attribution. We don't copy whole books into WikiTree. We just quote from those books. We give credit to so attribution. Um, although most of genealogy isn't copyrighted, uh, researchers deserve credit, even if it's not copyrighted. Somebody deserves credit for the work that they've done. We cite sources, big part of the honor code. We cite sources uh, because without sources, you can't objectively re resolve a conflicting information. Uh, and we are united in the mission to increase the world's common store of knowledge and to keep that information as free and as open as possible. So WikiTree uh, is big, it's collaborative, and people get overwhelmed by how big it is. You, you get on WikiTree and you're like, oh my gosh, what do I do? Where do I go? Hopefully this will help you figure some of that out. And if you really want to do some good learning, you can head over to Leanne Cooper's Pros and Cons, her WikiTree series, an introduction to WikiTree. Leanne has the kind of voice that you just want to listen to. Uh, and I love listening to those. Not only is Leanne a great WikiTreeer, she's a good friend of mine, and she actually lives not far from me here in my home city of Ottawa. So the help stuff over on WikiTree, if you go up to the top, right hand corner of any wikitree page go to the far right you'll see help as a drop down and you will see how to use wikitree or intro to wikitree right there in the menu you can click on that and get information and one of the first things it says is wikitree can be a little intimidating at first uh, so for 12 years 13 years 14 years now we've been working on this site and it has gotten big and it's good and it's it's just it's great uh, we have different levels of membership. Guests are people who come on and they're just checking things out. Family members want to communicate with cousins, exchange information, and help grow the tree. And wiki genealogists, you don't have to be a professional genealogist to be a wiki genealogist, 
Wiki genealogists collaborate on an increasingly accurate single family tree at a pretty deep level. So you can choose your level and join at whatever level you'd like. Wikitree also really worked hard to make sure that privacy is something that is em emphatic. So on every profile, you'll see that there is this little uh, symbol up at the top that shows what level of pr privacy this specific profile has. This happens to be my personal profile. And this level of pro privacy opens up my family tree and my information so that my DNA information propagates through the tree as it should. Um, but if you're on the trusted list for a profile, you can access everything. If you're not on the trusted list, uh, what you can see depends on the privacy level. To change a privacy level for a profile that you manage, you can click on privacy and go in and uh, check on that. You see that my privacy level is private with public biography and family tree. Uh, you can make any pri profile public or open that you're working on. Uh, but for these other privacy levels, these are really intended for people who want to protect their privacy at a higher level. And of course, unlisted is for people who are living that are listed on Wikitree that won't even show up in our uh, search engine uh, like Bing or Google. So, uh, and all of the profiles beyond a certain point will have to be open. So that makes things very easy when you want to do some changes on a profile for a, an, a long data ancestor. Adding your DNA test information to Wikitree. Now, Wikitree doesn't take your DNA data. So you're not downloading a raw data file from a, a DNA testing company and then uploading it to Wikitree. What you're doing is you're taking your test information. I took a test at Ancestry, or I took a test at Family Tree DNA, or I took a test at my heritage or 23andMe or Living DNA, and I'm going to tell Wikitree that I took that kind of test. And Wikitree will take that test information, just the identifying information, whether it's autosomal, mitochondrial, or a Y-DNA test, and populate the information throughout all of your ancestors' profiles. So you will show up all, all of your ancestors' profiles that you have taken a DNA test and that you have a paper trail going back to that ancestor. And anybody that sees that information can check your profile and, and vet your source information to see if it's a good, healthy, accurate limb on the great big old tree that is Wikitree. To add your DNA, you can go over to your specific Wikitree ID drop down menu. Mine happens to be Golden 7. Uh, and scroll down to DNA, click on that. The drop down menus across the right uh, half of the top of every Wikitree page, it, they are huge. Um, and that is really the best way to navigate the site. There are other tabs at the top of some pages, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But these uh, My Wikitree, the Wikitree ID uh, menu, the Add, the Find, and the Help are all right there and all available. So let's click on that DNA and that will take us to our DNA ancestors view for you or for me, for Mags called. And this happens to be mine. There's another cute baby. That's my dad. Isn't he cute? Uh, so, and my grandfather, Clee, that we met earlier. This is my DNA ancestors view. And you can see there's another tab across the top of this page, a tab view. So DNA ancestors, descendants, DNA test, DNA confirmation, or golden DNA. We want to highlight that uh, DNA tests so we can see it. Um, and this is a better view of those uh, tabs across the top of the page. We want to click on that DNA tests, and it will take us to a page where we can actually add the information. So scroll down in the list, find the type of DNA test you've taken. For this one in particular, it's a mitochondrial DNA test from Family Tree DNA. I can fill in my haplogroup. I can tell the system that it's a full sequence test, uh, which is very important to know. Uh, I can put in my mitoydna.org ID, which will allow people to actually click on my kit on Wikitree and see my actual information over on mitoydna.org. Or if there are two people listed on that profile, you can actually click on the mitoydna ID and, and do comparisons 
of the two tests for that kit. You see my kit number. And if I want to put in a little extra information, like uh, the reason for the test was this test was done to determine the parentage of my grandmother. Uh, so yeah, so that is how to add your test. And it's just that simple. You click add and it's there. When you do something on Wikitree, that Wikitree says, wait, 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 hold on a second. You get this big yellow bar that comes up across the top of the page with this uh, exclamation point in it. For this particular test, I've already uploaded a, an FTDNA mitochondrial DNA test. So Wikitree is telling me, hey, wait a minute, you're trying to add a second test. You might want to check that. So go back through and, and check what the message is telling you. But that's how to add the DNA test to your profile. And if you, if you try to do something wrong, you'll get that big banner. The other really big thing about DNA is having a family tree or your limbs on Wikitree to go along with what you have uh, for your DNA. Having a family tree to look at when you find a DNA tester is huge. So when we get those lists of DNA matches on, on GEDmatch, we look to see if there's a GEDcom button there or a wiki button, meaning they've got a wiki tree. Or over at Family Tree DNA, if you're looking for their uh, information, you want to look and see if they've got the little pedigree thing. So having that family tree to be able to identify uh, corresponding information with your tree is really important. So filling in your limbs on Wikitree is incredibly important. Uh, and there's lots of great help. Somebody said, is there, a, is there a handout for this presentation? No, there's not because the handout is Wikitree's help section. Uh, you can grab the uh, links. I don't mind if you take a screenshot of any of my slides. Just make sure you keep the uh, attribution there at the bottom of the page for them. Um, but Wikitree, the help... Uh, system is the best. Uh, so adding a family, when you start on Wikitree, you're going to start with yourself. So your profile, you're going to add your name, you're going to add your middle name, if you have a middle name, you're going to add your last name, your maiden name, if you're if you've got a, a married name, you can add uh, your married name, you know, in your uh, current last name, add your birth date, and uh, any information you want to put on your profile, you can add all that information. And then you want to start adding your parents and add their information. And then add your grandparents, add their information. So bit by bit, you're going to be working yourself back to uh, more and more family until you connect to somebody who is already on Wikitree and you want to connect to that person. You don't want to add a duplicate. You just want to connect. Um, when I first uh, started looking at Wikitree, um, I had a, a match come up that, boom, added me to 18 generations back. Now that got blown out of the water because another very interested Wikitreeer who was uh, very aware of Gustav Anjou uh, and his fraudulent work in genealogy back in the late 1800s, knew that part of my family line was a part of Gustav Anjou's issue. And so all of a sudden I had 18 generations back to the royal houses of England and then boom, I only had back to Edmund Bacon in England, uh, Virginia, and we don't know how he crosses over into England, but uh, all the, the names are right. So I know th that it's a part of the royal house. It's just, I got to figure out how to get him in there uh, back in the Bacon line. Of course, I haven't had time to do that. A, a genealogist uh, is like a cobbler, a shoe cobbler. The children's, uh, the cobbler's children have no shoes. So I have no treat. No, that's not true, but close. I haven't worked on that. So get your limbs added uh, to Wikitree. Collaboration. That's one of the, the sticking points that a lot of people have with uh, working on, on anything collaboratively is that there are going to be conflicts. There are going to be situations where people don't agree on sourcing or whatever. But 
collaboration means working together on a common project and that common project in this scope is our shared family tree um and what does collaboration mean on WikiTree? Well, following that mission of creating a free and increasingly accurate family tree, uh, close family members uh, collaborate with modern family on close history, distant cousins collaborated on shared genealogy, and ultimately the entire world will collaborate on the single family tree. And that means that there's one profile per person who ever lived, and we all work together on those profiles. And collaboration requires communication. Uh, a part of being able to collaborate is being able to discuss things logically, using the sources and information to define the discussion and to make the information from that discussion show up on that profile page. You can read search information and you can put up opposing views in a research notes section of a profile and discuss it in that research notes section until some sort of decision is made as to which one of those sources you want to follow which one is the, the primary source which is the new one there are other ways of discussing that but understanding that that misunderstanding about sources can be inevitable WikiTree worked on trying to figure out how to resolve some of those things. And a part of that is the problems with members process. If you've got a problem with another member who's disagreeing with something and you're not getting ahead of yourself, you can take that discussion. You can find the question in the discussion, find out what the question is that needs to be asked and take it to our G2G, which is the Genealogist to Genealogist Forum on Wikitree. And that can help by bringing in other people who may have more knowledge, like the Bacon family. There was that genealogist who knew about the Gustave Anjou uh, fraud that was perpetrated on my poor Bacons uh, and was able to not only show me about the fraud, but to introduce me to the, the legitimate uh, information about that. My bacon guy had been a, a connected by Gustave Anjou to somebody whose will actually said that they had no children. So you can't you can't connect somebody to somebody who says they don't have children. So the genealogist to genealogist forum is a good place to go to try and get some help with those unsettled issues. And this is what G2G looks like uh, from a, a little while ago. Jennifer Lopez was the challenge. Uh, this was back, uh, I don't see a date on there. Oh, July 20th for one of these. So Tom Cruise. So you can see that there's some pin questions that always end up at the top uh, for active ongoing things that are going on on Wikitree. Um, the, I think Wikitree tops, the connection history was one of the big ones when I took the screenshot. Um, and these are some general questions, like I want to add military history to somebody's profile, or is this the same as Davis 2901? This is somebody who's asking about whether or not they should try and merge two profiles. Uh, somebody having a little JEDCOM information uh, problems. Um, I, I want to upload a JEDCOM, but I'm having to add all my information. Um, and you can, they very quickly found out through an answer that, that we don't do a full GEDCOM uploads. You compare your GEDCOM to what's already there. You can work that. Uh, and then other questions, like anybody working on these relatives, there are no stupid questions in G2G. So don't be afraid to ask questions. You can also set up tags in G2G to help you with communication. Um, you can see that I'm interested in British home children. The surnames Compton, Crisp, Dillard, Golden Hunt, Lord, Mechamoyle. Templeton, you can see that I also put my own name in, Mags, as a tag. So if somebody says my name in one of the posts, I'll get a note that somebody has said my name and I'll hopefully go and look at it. You can see I've got the project leaders tag. So all of my questions, especially DNA, will show up in a specific feed for me based on my tags. So like people wanting to know about DNA haplogroups. Um, Canada project, which I'm very uh, active in because I live in Canada and I work in Canada. Um, and DNA, the Black Plague and AIDS, that was an interesting uh, post. 
anyway, so you, you, you can, you can define how G to G helps you when you go to G to G to, to ask for help, which I think is just cool. So connecting to existing ancestors. Remember I said you don't want to add uh, add duplicates to Wikitree. That's something that we uh, work really hard not to do. Um, so if a, if a personality, if a person's profile already exists on Wikitree, that's great. So when you're adding back, you're adding back your great, great grandfather and you, you add it and you see down at the bottom of the list before you actually click that add button that there are are other people with that same name. You go through and you review that. If you find somebody that's already there, you click and you let that profile be the connection to your family. So you're actually connecting yourself to that profile. And in doing that, you're connecting yourself to the bigger tree as well, that whole connection uh, thing that we mentioned briefly. Don't create a duplicate. Um, you can edit relationships of existing profiles um, by asking to be on the trusted list. Unless it's open, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, and profiles for living people, those are not listed on Wikitree. That is a part of uh, the changes that came about because of the GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation that was enacted in 2017. So adding and connecting existing profiles is hugely important. And this is my great grandfather's profile. Here is my grandfather. Uh, and uh, let's see, this is connected to the G to G questions uh, that I've got that down there at the bottom. That's a little bit of a mistake. Uh, but this is what a profile looks like. Once you start adding the information, you see that you can add all of the siblings, all of the children. Uh, you can add the wife or the wives in this case. Um, my great grandfather was married twice. Um, and in my research, I actually found that there was a second child born to the first marriage that nobody in the family knew about. So I introduced them to another half uh, sibling there in that family. And you can also see that I'm, not only do I have a rare name in Galden, but I have other rare names in my family like Mechamoil. Uh, which is a fun thing. So this is what a profile looks like, just the basic information. And you can add information from the edit tab. Remember I said there's all of those tabs across the top of the page, and there's also other tabs along some of the pages at the top. And this is what the edit screen looks like. So if you were on John James Galden's profile and you clicked on this edit tab, this list of uh, fields that you can fill in for all of the information, John. Um, now he actually went by John James or JJ. Um, and so that is his preferred name is John James. So John James, his middle name and Galden, uh, his last name at birth. If there had been some sort of spelling discrepancy about his name, some Galdens uh, spell it with an I, some Galdings spell it with an ING. So you could put in other last names for uh, some of the other spellings. You put in his birth date. Uh, you can see there's other information filled in. Uh, one of the most important things, though, for DNA is to be able to identify the type of relationship that James uh, Dempsey had with his child, John James. And he you can identify if you were adopted that the father is non-biological. You can say, well, I'm, I'm kind of okay with it, but I'm not really certain that he's the father. Or you can identify as being confident that it's a father. Or you can say that the father is confirmed with DNA. If you click father is confirmed with DNA, you must have a confirmation statement in the sources section or a DNA section on the profile that states uh, something along the lines of uh, these two people match at family tree DNA by so much uh, uh, Cinemorgans or if you use triangulation, there's actually an app that will do that. And I think I discussed that here in just a minute. But you can go through and you can identify and you can give uh, a status uh, with each one of those parents. And that's a really important thing to do, especially if you've got adoptions going on. Uh, you can also uh, make sure that you've got some good sources going on. Here's the kind of DNA statement. This is actually an older statement. There's a newer version of this for this. Uh, but this is uh, anonymous Galding. 
uh, and Earl Galding match on 35 of 37 markers, thereby confirming their direct paternal lines. There is actually now a big Y DNA test for both of these men, uh, and he is still anonymous. And he is actually not on WikiTree, uh, but he is actually the, the test. It's over at FTDNA, and I think that's a part of the confirmation statement. Uh, but now they have a big Y SNP that is their own little SNP. Uh, so we want more Galding testers to come along and uh, change that uh, confirmation statement even better. You can have uh, information on the census information. Find a grave. I, I don't use find a grave as a source, but I say usually I'll have it in the body of the biography saying you may find more information if you check out the find a grave memorial. Uh, and there's a little template to do that. But you get the gist of how uh, good sourcing looks on a WikiTree profile. Uh, and on profiles, the DNA. Well, I entered my DNA test back at the very beginning of this presentation. And when I did that, uh, I also added my dad's DNA. Uh, so my dad and myself and several other people, I'll show you that in just a second, we actually show up in the DNA tested connections over on the right side of the profile and on every ancestor profile that we connect to with our genealogical tree. So this is John James's profile. This is my dad's grandfather. My dad did a Y DNA test uh, and all of his, this is the actual, the, uh, the big Y uh, here listed, but it's actually not the final big Y, which happened once we got the second tester. So that information is there. You can see it's at Family Tree DNA, what kind of tests he took, the uh, SNP for that, the DNA kit number over at FTDNA, which FTDNA does not consider a part of their privacy issue. So you can list their kits. And of course, if you're on WikiTree, you get permission for this information to be displayed publicly anyway. Uh, and you can see there's a link over to my dad's Mito Y DNA ID, where you can either compare his test if there were other people listed on this profile. Uh, if Anonymous Galding was on Wikitree, I could have him listed and actually click and compare those two tests over at Mito Y DNA uh, on the YSTR up to uh, 111 right now. Uh, there may be an update for that. Don't want to let too much out of the hat. Uh, and you can also the, see the autosomal DNA testers for this fellow. Um, and you can see that my father would have inherited about 25% and I would have inherited about 12.5% from this in individual. You know, it's all random. Uh, but you can also see that uh, my dad has the autosomal family finder test. You can see his GEDmatch ID where you can also do comparisons for that information or see his GEDmatch ID. You can see that I've done an ancestry DNA test. Um, and a living DNA test is all combined to make a super kit over at GEDmatch, which is the UZ or UZ4085854 over at uh, GEDmatch. So you can find all of the DNA data on this profile for this ancestor, which makes WikiTree stand out from all the rest. Uh, and this is the rest of the people for John Galding's profile of 1735. You can see there's a whole ton of people tested and this is actually could be updated there's about 10 more now that have tested and yes i have gone through and hit compare and compare and compare and compare to all of these people and i know who matches and who don't and some of these people shouldn't match because this is beyond the distance of what autosomal dna tests can show but because there is some endogamy in some of the golden lines my, not mine of course <clears throat> those numbers might be uh, bigger than they should be because of endogamy. And also there might be a possibility that I may not have inherited the same bit of DNA as they did. So this uh, L. Kuiper right here is actually a fairly close relative. And you would think that, that she and I would share a little bit of DNA, but we don't. Um, it, it's just because she inherited a different part. She actually matches other people in the family, just not me. And I match other people in the family, just not her. <clears throat> so that goes back to uh, making sure that you interpret the information from the DNA test. So the WikiTree integrations, I, I mentioned that uh, briefly in the last one where you can actually 
click on a mito -Y DNA ID and compare and see the test results. Uh, and this is what it would look like if you went over to my dad's uh, mito -Y DNA profile, you would be able to see actually all 838 of his STR markers listed on the page. I just didn't have a place to do that. And you'd be able to do haplogroup predictions. You'd be able to see the Explorer, the SNP age, or the SNP tracker over at Rob Spencer's um, Scaled Innovations. You would also be able to see uh, a WikiTree descendant uh, list there from, uh, from my dad's profile. And you can also go straight from MinoY DNA over to GEDmatch to do a one to many, as well as doing a GEDmatch to MinoY DNA. Uh, and I think I show that in one of the next uh, slides or the upcoming slides. So on Wikitree, you can actually compare two tests. You can click on that compare button. It'll ask you for the uh, the ID over at MinoY DNA and it, click on add. And you can actually compare those two tests and actually see the actual uh, differences in the mutations. There's also some other little quick things that you can see. And a chart showing you information uh, uh, like the fast changing markers, which would help identify people that are closer in time to you. <laughs> you can also do that. Uh, you, you can do that information. You can see that over at Wikitree, over at GEDmatch as well. And you can see that, that this person has both a GEDcom uploaded at GEDmatch and a Wikitree link and a mitoydna.org. Um, link off to their YM mitochondrial DNA kit from GEDmatch. <clears throat> and you can do comparisons over at GEDmatch as well. Uh, you can't do triangulation because GEDmatch doesn't have it set up so that you can do three kits at a time. It would be cool if they could, but you can actually go through and check the two kits, <clears throat> keep track of those segments and those chromosomes that you're looking at, and a spreadsheet or something and be able to to work those triangulation um confirmation statements doing that like uh, this is my dad and i hear so obviously we have a lot of shared information but you, you could actually keep a uh, spreadsheet and work those triangulation uh statements for wikitree from the wikitree profile so some of the DNA features that, that are exciting about Wikitree, we, we hit that DNA uh, drop-down menu from the Wikitree ID, and it showed the really great way uh, I inherit all of the different kinds of DNA in my family. And if you aren't really familiar about with how DNA inheritance works, this really helps. So my mom and my grandmother, I, I inherit my mitochondrial DNA from them. And it shows my mitochondrial DNA going up the matrilineal line of, of descent. And you can see that I do not inherit the Y DNA from my dad and his dad. But I do inherit a little bit of X from my dad because it comes down from his mother. And the same thing for my both my maternal grandparents, I inherit a little bit of the X from them. So if you aren't sure about how your, your inheritance works, go and check out your DNA Ancestors page. Not only will you get that, you'll get a complete list of all the mitochondrial DNA line going back. And this goes back to Ann. We don't know her last name. She married some guy named Hall in Raven County, Georgia. And I've been able to confirm her DNA because I have other ancestors who go back to her with a paper trail, both uh, with, with autosomal DNA. Uh, and I've been working her line with the mitochondrial DNA as well. You can see my father's Y DNA, not on my profile, but on my dad's profile. If you click his uh, Wikitree ID and go to DNA, you'll see his. So you can see that there's Y DNA back to John Matthew Galden. Uh, and that's Y700 confirmed. And you can also see all of that really hard to understand X DNA information and the different percentages that you would inherit from each one of these uh these ancestors. So my probable probably will uh, inherit about 12.5% from Nancy Margaret Franks uh, or 25% from my great grandmother, just about. So it's really interesting to see that. And you can also see the DNA confirmations that have been done for those 
uh, in that X area as well. Remember, we got uh, those page tabs. So we're going to go from the DNA Ancestors tab over to the DNA Descendants tab. And that gives you a complete list of the descendants of somebody. So for this one, I, I put in uh, John Galding of New Kent County back in the 1600s. And I can go down through the list of his descendants and I can find somebody that is a Y DNA tested or any other tester in that list that there are people who have DNA tested in that family. And I can call them up and say, hey, I don't have your DNA tested information. Can you share that with me? Or go to their profile and see it straight on Wikitree. Uh, so that's a great way of seeing DNA testers in the family line. I can also check out uh, what kind of tests have been taken by going to the DNA tested tab. That's the, the tab, um, kind of jump ahead here, but the DNA test tabs will show me all the tests for a particular person. Uh, you can see I've got uh, my dad. This is dad's Y DNA and his family finder from Family Tree DNA. Uh, and then you can go over to the DNA confirmation tab, which will show you how far along you have gotten with your DNA confirmations. You can see the check boxes here that I've got my dad's Y all the way back. I've got my mitochondrial DNA back to the 1790s. Uh, I've worked my father's, my mother's uh, father's mother, father's line back, the mitochondrial line for him. Uh, and you can also, there will also be people listed down uh, in your list of people here that will be people that you could possibly contact for doing more DNA testing. Uh, running on from there, here's something that's huge. If I click on this Galden DNA, or if I click on, uh, or go to the Galden DNA, I in, or if I go to the Galden DNA, DNA page, it's going to show me a list of our common ancestors and the people that I might share with that ancestor, like Earl and Alatel and myself. Now, I can show all of these people because, again, they're on Wikitree and it's all public. Uh, these kinds of things, this is the Galding connection. You can see Rebecca Wallace and William Galding on here and Earl Galden. Uh, and this is the IN connection with Tim Phillips and Earl Galden showing up there. And it, it's not just these, these are just the A's, Alexander and Adeline before. These are just, this is just a small bit of that. There's a huge list of these. There's 123 people on that page, 180 on this page, and, 100, and 486 on this page. And all of these connections are showing up because not only I have filled in all of these limbs for these families, but other cousins have collaboratively worked and filled in their limbs as well. Uh, confirmations and citations. Wikitree is the only place that I have seen other than some of the books that you can buy that talk to you about how to do confirmations for DNA. And it's huge. You have to have a confirmation statement in a DNA citation uh, if you say that DNA is confirmed for somebody. Uh, and uh, the help is really cool. It's um, what it means to Wikitree. And when you're ready to use them, you can go through and say, I'm going to do a parent-child uh, confirmed DNA. What does con confirmed mean? Uh, DNA matches with incomplete genealogical connections. You can check all of this information out in the help feed. And each one of these things will walk you through step by step how to do it. Uh, does confirmed mean proven? No, it doesn't mean proven. A confirmation is not absolute proof, but it does confirm the genealogical tra they, trail. That's why we call it a DNA confirmation statement. Uh, you can also talk, talk about and see how the uh, confirmation relationship status that we talked about earlier. Uh, and uh, there's that again. I'll show you that. Uh, and you can also learn a lot about having to do the actual DNA confirmation statements. And this is a really good way. If, if Do you have a match? If yes, you go here. If not, you go there. Uh, so you can follow through this information. In the end, you'll end up with a good DNA confirmation statement. There's help on triangulation. There's help on Y-DNA. There's help on mitochondrial DNA. And how to mark DNA relationships is confirmed. There's lots of information on that as well as a DNA confirmation app. Greg Clark designed this for the DNA uh, integrators project 
and it's great. Uh, so you can choose the type of DNA match you want to create a confirmation statement for. The, uh, the program will auto-populate information from Wikitree and include that information. Uh, so it's a great help. You can find that link there at the bottom or in the apps drop down from the top. Uh, running out of, of time and categories is a really huge on Wikitree and we, uh, DNA. Now, categories are listed on most profiles underneath this tab. And there's a second uh, list of, table, of tabs here and categories. We want to click on that. And it will take us down to the bottom of the page and show us all the tabs for a particular profile. For mine, it's genetic genealogist, Southern, United States, Canada, Ontario, uh, Arborist project member, DNA project member. I'm a Wikitree leader. Uh, I lead the Templeton name study, the Galding name study. I'm in the U.S. Southern Colonies project. So you can see that there are all of those categories, like location category. I could put in here that I was born in Greenville, South Carolina, or that I currently live in Ottawa, Ontario. Uh, but for DNA, there are even better things you can do. You can identify that you have a Y-DNA haplogroup, a high-level haplogroup of RM269, which my father is. Uh, and it will give you the category page with all of the other people who are listed as RM269, um, which is cool. Now, keep that in mind. I can I can do a high-level Y-DNA uh uh, identification for a tester. But for mitochondrial DNA, you can actually put a template on the page that shows that I have a full sequence mitochondrial DNA haplogroup, and this is the haplogroup for my earliest ancestor. And this template actually goes on my earliest matrilineal line ancestor. I can identify and have it automatically create a haplogroup for this particular uh, haplogroup, which is H1B1T16362C. Try and remember that. I still can't remember that. So I can identify that. But there's also, if you have a Y-DNA test where you have uh, tested out to big Y700, now there may be a big Y1100 test at some time in the future. Uh, but I can tell you right now that my big Y700 test has placed my earliest known ancestor in the area of Manchester, England, Lancashire, in a time frame of 200 or 300 years from 16 something to 17 uh, or to 1900. And the median of that is 1750, which is the actual birth date of my earliest known common ancestor with that other DNA tester. So I could actually have a template to put on my Y DNA earliest known ancestor, John Matthew Galding, showing that his terminal step uh, is FTC-46410. Uh, so and it, that template is actually in the process of being improved. So we can actually have a Y DNA template like we have the earliest known ancestor mitochondrial DNA template. I can also create a uh, specific haplogroup or uh, category for all of the testers who only match me. So I go through my matches on FTDNA and I create a category based on each one of the, the earliest known ancestors listed for my mitochondrial DNA matches. I create profiles for those ancestors, add them to Wikitree, and then give them that mitochondrial DNA haplogroup one for my haplogroup. And this is all the testers who match me who are on Wikitree and also on FTDNA. Do you see something that all of these people have in common? It's a very obvious to me because I'm very aware of the U.S. Uh, South. These are all people who lived in Appalachia. That's a big hint when you're working on mitochondrial DNA. Not only that, one of these people actually ended up living in the same county as my ancestor at the same time, 1827, I think. 
So that also gives me a clue that I have somebody who matches my haplogroup who lived in the exact same geographic area. They probably have a very strong connection. Have I worked on that yet? No, the shoe cobbler's children have no shoes. But I am working on that. Don't worry. So categorization for uh, DNA projects. Um, one of the things that I wanted to add about this, particularly for this uh, sh particular thing, is I took all my Templetons and I identified all of the migration routes for a specific haplogroup for the Templetons. And at the time I did this, I didn't realize that there was a specific group that were Irish and a specific group that were Scottish. And But I wanted to identify this group that left Lawrence County, uh, South Carolina, and migrated to Indiana and then migrated from Indiana out to other parts of the world because I had so many people contacting me saying, I live in such and such, I am a Templeton, but I don't know who I am. I could go back to the categorization project that I did on the migration of the Templetons. I could look at that location category for that project and identify that that person was a part of the migration that went through Indiana and that they originated with Robert Sr. or David or James in Iredell County, North Carolina. I could identify where their earliest known ancestor was because I did all that work to figure out the migration patterns. And that was a part of a categorization for DNA that a lot of people don't realize the power in that. Wikitree and group projects. Um, FTDNA is the person who really pioneered the idea of family tree D DNA group projects. Uh, and it is a huge thing. There are 3,000 or so DNA group projects over at Family Tree DNA. The big thing about FTDNA is that they don't have the space on FTDNA to allow you to add things like lineages or other information about uh, the haplogroups or anything like that. But they have the data for the DNA. So as a companion site to FTDNA's group projects, Wikitree is a really good idea. <coughs> and you can see where I have linked the Templeton DNA group project with Wikitree. And I've, I've been able to do some great charts about how some of the different... Um, SNPs come up through and how we're uh, Irish related to the O'Neill clan here with the RM222 and it goes our RM269. I have an update on that uh, chart uh, since the big Y700 test. Uh, you can also see that uh, there were three people that were working on the Templeton DNA group project at the time, myself, Jack Templeton and Ron Templeton. Jack Templeton has simply uh, has recently passed away Ron Templeton has retired, but we all three got together and we started working on this. And the DNA introduced us to the fact that James, David, and Robert, it was a huge breakthrough. We figured out that these three were brothers. And since then, <coughs> we've been able to, to figure out they actually come from Island McGee, Ireland. There's another brother that we have found in Ireland. Uh, so that's exciting. A Samuel. Uh, Roberta Estes has her uh, DNA group project information on Wikitree. She has some great um, charts on there as well that look really pretty and help explain a part of the project uh, really well. Another thing about uh, Wikitree is being able to use the relationship finder to find relationships and relationship trails. Like this is the relationship trail from my father back to his earliest known ancestor and the common shared ancestor by my father and his other big Y DNA tester. Uh, Wikitree DNA sharing and cousin bait is huge. If you find someone who matches your DNA, who knows their genealogy, they can tell you about your genealogy. So finding these matches and being able to draw these cousins in is huge. Um, on my profile page, I, instead of answering five or 600 uh, emails a week about what lines I might have or don't have in our family tree. I have this great uh, list that I designed that Greg Clark turned into an app. You can actually turn uh, your surnames into this kind of list that shows your maternal side, your paternal side by color, 
uh, and it shows all of your surnames. And even here, uh, the Golden, Golden, Goldings, we have just recently proven uh, that we are not golden. So I could take this one off of that list. But I can, instead of answering an email with a bunch of verbiage, I say, here are all my surnames. The links go to my earliest known ancestor for each one of these. So I, my cousin Bait is shorthanded. Um, and that is the surname generator that you can grab from, uh, from uh, the app section. I also have the DNA confirmation trails on my profile so people can see that. So somebody sends me an email, I send them straight over to my Wikitree profile. You can share your family tree on uh, anywhere. You can grab a link for Facebook. Uh, and th th they actually say it. Here's a way to lure people uh, into finding you. And for fun, uh, Greg uh, Clark just came out with uh, his Six Degrees app. There's a picture of Greg in front of the piano. He's a, a math mu musician. There you go. He's a math musician. Uh, but on his Six Degrees of Separation chart, people don't realize this. When there is an endogamous relationship on that chart, the halo will show up double. So um, this family have... Uh, a, a, another golden in the mix here. So they have endogamy. These don't. So you can see endogamy that indicates relative is related in more than one way to a central person. So that is really cool. And you can have it show up in different ways. So it's a little bit brighter. Uh, but I think that's great. And here you can actually see how they are endogamous. So if you have endogamy in your family and you want to figure it out, enter your information into Wikitree and Wikitree will do the work for you. <laughs> and that is Wikitree and DNA. And we have 30 seconds left. Woo! You do. And there is a quick question <clears throat> from someone, uh, Lisa, Liza. Can you add a Y-DNA test result to a female? Yeah. Not Y-DNA. No. You can add their father. And you can actually say in the biography that this person had their father tested, but you would have to add the father. And if the father's living, he would actually have to list that information. Good to know. Thank you, Max. That was great. I need to go work on some of my DNA confirmations and all that good yeah, stuff. Yeah, I love that. I love that. That's what people do after they watch my uh, <laughs> DNA and Wikitree. Is, Ooh, I've got to so go work on Wikitree now. So but yet, I must go host another session so my dna confirmations will have to wait thanks, thanks Alan. i'm gonna hang out here for a minute and read through some of the uh comments okay thanks y'all bye <laughs>